Let's just see if this works. So hello, um, my name is Markus Glaser. I am a developer at Hello World. Um, and I want to share with you a thought I've been playing with for quite a few times, quite, quite some time, um, which uh, is about the role of MediaWiki, especially in the context of this um, uh, semantic media wiki of the enterprise use of wikis. Um, so let's quickly recap what we've seen so far. Um, this is just an ex excerpt um, of some media wiki use cases we've seen. So we've seen quizzing, we've seen innovation management, we've seen historic archive, we've seen microblogging and many others. And please, um, uh, apologies for anyone I did not mention here. Um, if you think about it, this is not a wiki. Right? So what actually happens is that we are using a wiki to build applications on top which are not wikis anymore, which are more than wikis, which go beyond wikis. And um, I was, when, when I realized that, I was kind of thinking what is, what makes a difference? So why do we use wikis to do this and not say what press is? Um, or type of trees or whatever. What, what makes a wiki special? So um, what I want to do is, um, I, yeah, and I've seen one of the, the, the core points is um, that many people use wikis for prototyping things. So you can quickly develop um, some kind of mock-up, some basic um, application, and you can gradually, with the help of MediaWiki and the MediaWiki extensions, develop that into a fully fledged application um, that even can be used in productive environments. Um, and in my talk, I will try together with you to explore this idea a little bit further. Um, so let's first look at what prototyping is, or some basic concepts of prototyping, um, then see why Wiki, MediaWiki is maybe a good prototyping toolbox. Um, I want to share some examples with you, some example prototyping workflows maybe, and then, um, yeah, sum up why MediaWiki is special. So, um, what's prototyping? Um, with prototyping, what you do is you try to quickly give your customer, the user, or yourself, an impression of how the product, how the end thing is going to look like. Um, and of course, this, um, this helps you and the user to assess, to identify, for example, basic requirements. So prototyping is used for requirement engineering, for example, in software uh, contexts. It's also um, uh, used to, um, to give the user some kind of look and feel how it's going to look like in the end and maybe uh, discover some you know, um, basic drawbacks uh, at a very early stage. So as you can see, this car has only three uh, tires. So once you try to uh, to to um, to drive around a, a corner, it might you might see that it might become unstable. You can see that from a prototype. Um, also, it helps you to get initial ideas about the resources required, and of course, something with, which is very important about the data model of your software. So, what's the scope of a prototype? Um, as when when you start to um, to look into a subject, what you usually do, or what I do is, I go to Wikipedia and I see what what have they written about a topic. So um, here's a few things I read on Wikipedia about prototyping, which I find interesting. Um, the scope of a prototype can be a horizontal prototype versus a vertical prototype. So a horizontal prototype gives you a very broad view of the entire system. Um, you kind of prototype all the components, uh, especially from a user interface, um, point of view, um, see where the inputs are, where the outputs are, you mock up some inputs, um, and you get the user to buy in and confirm the requirements of the scope. So that's one, um, one version of a prototype. Second version of a prototype is the vertical prototype, uh, where you check and refine a data model on one specific um, sub-aspect um, of, of the system you want to prototype. Um, you also can um, vertically prototype the system interface, uh, which means the integration with other systems, for example. Um, and usually when, when I do um, kind of vertical prototypes, I realize I'm doing this already without knowing I'm doing it. Um, then they usually uh, call it proof of concept for, um, for some rather challenging um, tasks, 
Like if you have a complex system integration, one of the first things you do, even in a prototype, is to try to connect to that system somehow and get the information. And maybe you don't have it in a, in a ready format already, but you know it can be done. So that is also part of a vertical prototype. On the other hand, um, you can distinguish prototypes in, into uh, two other dimensions, um, and that's the role of the prototype in the process, in the development process. So um, Wikipedia lists like six or seven of them. Um, the main um, two roles um, we see is throwaway prototyping, which you use for demoing and showcasing something. Um, they're usually not very functional, and they, um, they're just intended to um, give um, the user a, a, a broad view, and then you throw it away, which is not um, very satisfying for developers, of course. Um, you don't want to write code and then throw it away. So um, a different approach is the evolutionary prototyping, where you um, start with a um, very um, very easy prototype and you, you success, uh, successively evolve that prototype into a fully functional piece of software, which is meant to be working in the end and which is meant to go into production in the end. Um, and one of the things I want to point out is that in evolutionary prototyping, you can create it in a way that it is functional, functional from the beginning. So um, even if you have to, um, to say, um, add some functionality manually in some way, input some data, um, it's, it's functional um, as a whole system from the beginning on. Okay, next step, media key. So media key, in my view, is just um, the perfect prototyping toolbox. So you have all you need in media key. Um, basically, what you get with MediaWiki is a basic interface for entering, updating, deleting, creating, editing data information of any kind. And um, the wiki is kind of agnostic to what you want to put into that data, um, into that wiki. It's, you can put in anything, right? Um, so you can have various con content models. Um, but then MediaWiki also brings things like configurable forms, various modes of displaying things like tables, calendars, clickable Im images, all that kind of thing. It also brings basic workflows and quality assurance technologies and, and a lot of more of that functionality. When you use it, um, it is extremely fast and refinable. I think we've heard that yesterday as well at some point. Um, so when you work with a media wiki, it's, you can easily um, shift things around, you can easily rearrange stuff, you can easily add things. Um, and you can start with a very low complexity and it's highly changeable. So you, you then gradually professionalize the components while still keeping functionality. And one thing we found which is interesting is you can stop when it's okay. So maybe um, your initial idea is I start with a um, a semantic form um, to just sketch out how it looks like, but in the end I will create a, um, a dialog box um, which needs some coding, but then the customer is happy with the semantic form and you can stop at that point. You say, okay, that's it. We don't need to put that extra effort into developing. Um, so, for example, um, an example prototyping procedure with increasing complexity could be a mocker in wiki text then use templates to standardize things, then semantify the templates. Um, you could add Lua uh, for in-app logic. And then if you need a more um, integrated user interface, for example, or extra functionality, then is only then is the point where you start coding and you start adding extra functionality. Um, so let's look at some examples of how this could be done and can be done. And as usual examples, when it comes to examples, it, it's not the prototypical uh, way. Um, I just want to show you a few of the things we did and how uh, we proceeded with the prototyping. So this, what you see here, is uh, a wiki which stores information about musical pieces. So um, you have um, scores here, you have uh, on the, um, my left hand side you can see there is metadata. Um, you can see we have a few tabs, so we divided the content into different sections. Um, and um, 
our question was uh, especially how do we um, how do we model the metadata concept here um, and one of the important questions was um, we didn't want to duplicate metadata so there's a lot of metadata out there uh, you could get it from the outside if you know the right connectors um, so what's the basic set of metadata we need um, and we started off writing a template um, this is the classical infobox kind of uh, thing um, and um, for those of you who are familiar with this code, you can see that this is also already stage two, so it's semantified. Um, so we started uh, writing an initial template, um, and we, we created a few of those pages just to see um, if the data we need is already in there, or if we need to refine the data model. Um, once we knew that we, we are happy with the, um, yeah, with the, uh, the data set, um, we then went and semantified this data. But then at a certain point, we found that um, the semantic forms interface is not, um, does not give our users the, the experience we wanted them to have. So on top of that, we created um, a dialog um, which helps the, um, the users um, edit, um, edit these, uh, these annotations. So yeah, so that's the, the process here uh, from wiki text to actually coding, um, and uh, it was functional from the beginning. I mean, in the first place, the information was just stored as wiki text in the wiki page, then we, we moved it to info boxes and templates um, and to semantics, and then we uh, added an interface to it. Um, another kind of thing was um, how do we model the scores in there? Um, so um, scores uh, is a media wiki extension which is which you can use to display a musical notation. Um, and the question was, where do we put this information? And you can see um, we added a concept which is now called shadow namespaces, I think. So um, instead of having a page and a discussion, we have a page and a description and lyrics and scores and rights and whatever on that, um, on that wiki. That is the result of um, uh, of a, a, a kind of a prototyping. We started off using just plain wiki pa pages, which we linked, and then once we knew we are happy with the concept, we coded that into tabs, and um, we changed the interface on that way. And that also gave us the, um, the idea of putting all this course data into, into a course namespace, which we still can attach to, um, to a given um, piece of work, piece of music. Um, yeah, so um, here's all of what I said written down. Um, another example uh, is prototyping the user interface. So in, in this example, um, this is a um, kind of a link um, or a bookmarking tool. So you can store annotated bookmarks in a wiki, which is not a wiki anymore then. Um, and the question was, how do we get the data in there? So um, this it's called uh, Lintensia, so you can add all the links and then you can annotate them. Um, and the question was, how do we build the interface? Again, we could start off with a very basic idea um, and use a wiki page per bookmark to add the information. Then we created the data model somehow. Um, and then we, um, we saw that there needs to be extra functionality. Um, initially, what you could do is, yeah, the, the main question was, how do we get the bookmarks um, there's a lot of bookmarks, URLs stored in this wiki. How do we get them out in a way that the user um, does have some, some good information and how can they retrieve it? And um, so an initial idea was to store it in, in wiki pages, which may be categorized, and you just get them out by category um, with a form of like special page. Um, you know all that there is especially um, all pages with prefixes, which you can use um, for identifying this, or um, the search. And um, once we knew how we want to store the data, um, we added that information to a blue spice search, and we can now display um, things via blue spice. Second um, idea is what we found is that um, when people annotate bookmarks, there's so much information that's already there, and we just need to draw it from that page um, that is bookmarked. So page title, um, a, a, a screenshot, um, 
I don't know, the URL itself, um, maybe basic categorization, metadata description, all of that is already there. So um, in the next step of, of this bookmarking tool, instead of making the user add all this information by themselves, um, we then did some programming on that bit and, and only on that bit. So we had everything else in place and we said, let's fill in the data we already have via uh, bot, via automatic features. Um, and that's what you can see here. So there's a dialogue, uh, you add an URL and then um, some mechanism goes off using PhantomJS and others um, to retrieve the data from that page. So again, we started with a very basic thing. Um, we asked the um, customer, is this what you like? Is it, is it how you expect it? And then we started automating things once we knew it's, um, it's designed in a way the customer likes it. Um, so there's one uh, last example, uh, which I can't show you as a screenshot because it's, um, um, yeah, it's, it's a customer's uh, proprietary work. Um, what you see here is a more complex document. Um, you imagine you are working in a service center for um, a call center, service center mm -hmm. for internal IT. Um, and then uh, something happens. So in, in your server farm, um, one of the servers blows up because the disk is full. Um, this is basically an, um, a system, a service center system that helps the agents that are supposed to, uh, to fix that disk full error uh, to uh, quickly get uh, access to the relevant information. Um, and uh, the challenge is that the relevant information is stored all across um, the, the wiki on the one hand and all across the customer's IT environment on the other hand. So um, we, um, the requirement was to somehow integrate all of that data dynamically into one page because the agent who has maybe five minutes to, to fix that issue needs to, doesn't uh, want to do a lot of research but needs to get all the information as quickly as possible. Um, and information in wiki is, is um, yeah, quite naturally fits together. So um, uh, we, the, the, uh, this is how the document is structured. So in the first block we get external data which is from an incident monitoring system and it gives us an incident monitoring ID. So we, um, we need to fetch external data like more information about the incidents, when it happened, uh, what system it is that, that is affected and all of that kind of things. And that is stored in the um, monitoring tool. Um, so what happens is the agent clicks on an URL. The URL gets an identifier which gives us um, the incident data identifier and we fetch it via external data. Um, and then we use that external data um, to, uh, to select the correct information about the incident. So what does it mean if a disk is full, um, which is a wiki page, right? So we connect those two. And then um, the, the third part is the solution information. And that was one of the more interesting questions because they wanted us to do a best match. So we could not just get, um, so, so if the, um, the incident, for example, is disk full on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 uh, server, then the initial um, uh, information the system should, uh, was supposed to display was exactly that. Get me that page, which is about disk full on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. But then they said, um, so if there is no information about Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6, then maybe there's information about Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or maybe there's information about Linux. So we had a, um, the requirement is a um, best match uh, strategy, which propagates up. And that was, um, I, I don't know if we're not knowledgeable in semantics enough, but it seemed to me it's not really possible in, um, to do completely with semantics. So our approach was to use Lua um, and code some logic within the system. And, um, this is still in the make, so it's, I, I can't tell you if it works, but what I can tell you is that all of this can be done, or at least I, I, uh, I suspect it can be done, within the wiki, with onboard means. So we don't, for even such a, a complex and dynamic document, we don't have to code a lot. We can use onboard means. 
Okay, skip that one. So the question uh, is why MediaWiki? Why are you so special in MediaWiki? Um, probably if you haven't seen that video, you should. And um, that's a very special case of a cat chasing a duck. So why is MediaWiki so special? Um, as I said, it's um, I, I usually um, I, I think of MediaWiki like uh, as of a white sheet of paper. So with a white sheet of paper, you can do almost anything. You can um, draw, uh, create drawings. You can calculate on it. You can um, write things down. You can even um, uh, you can even fold it and, and make paper planes. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do. And for me, MediaWiki is like a white sheet of paper for information storage. Um, you can do almost anything with it. Um, so um, that makes it special because it's so very basic and so very simple. But then it brings along a lot of means to build an interface like forms, various content types, templates. You can create a data model from within the, the um, system. You can implement basic logic. You can implement workflows. You can integrate other systems. And e uh, 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 only if, if all of that does not so satisfy your needs, you are required to do some coding. So you can do a lot of things from within the system um, without having to have um, uh, in-depth um, PHP or JavaScript skills. And that is, for me, um, the, um, the tagline. So MediaWiki is the tool for prototyping because it empowers users and not developers to do prototyping from within the application. OK, thanks for being with me. Are there any questions? Mark? Ah. Yeah, thanks for a very interesting talk. I think it's important to uh, know a bit here about what's the power of MediaWiki. I was thinking about an additional thing that yesterday, actually, that uh, there is this trend nowadays to go more and more towards text-based tools. Because then you can do like you can keep between version control and you can use whatever your favorite text editor and so on, and it really makes things more robust. And it seems to be a little bit of the similar story with MediaWiki. It's just text, so it will always work. You always have XML import and export, for example, and then everything else is added on top, is extra, so to say. So maybe maybe we could push harder on, on these benefits. Right. Um, I think that's a, a, a good remark. And um, we also, also discussed the idea, like the question yesterday we discussed was, um, will, it, will it stick around? So usually when you prototype, you don't have um, upgradability in mind, for example. Um, but one of the things, the benefits you could get from here is that MediaWiki, and if you use onboard, onboard tools, then you are part of the up, update upgrade cycle. Um, and it's, it's um, sustainable from the beginning, right? So um, you are part of a system that evolves and you, and you just do it within that. And um, your aspect of, of um, uh, content sustainability goes in the same direction. So there will always be, um, it will always be possible to uh, work with text-based content. Mark. Um, I, I just wanted to add it data thing, I guess, a story. Um, I have a client that was, they had not bought into the IMEF, yet, the wiki yet, but they spent two years paying a consultant to come up with a, a solution so that they could, you know, educate their younger employees um, on, on the technology and information that they had. Uh, Two years later, they were still not satisfied. Uh, one weekend, the senior geophysicist takes MediaWiki and he says, I can do this in MediaWiki. Um, and he did it in one weekend um, and produced a satisfactory solution. That is empowering the user. And, and it, it is a good thing that I'm the MediaWiki consultant because they, they know the power. and. and they're familiar with that instead of, you know, paying, I, I would like to be paid not to deliver, but, you know, <laughs> it is, I, I can actually deliver, so. Yeah, perhaps we should rethink our business model and switch to some more complicated system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
in these uh, prototyping projects, how would you implement the feedback loop to your customers? Would that be via email? Would that be via interviews? Would that be via uh, within the wiki maybe even? So how would that work usually? Um, so usually we work with the ticket system, uh, which is not a wiki, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's Redmine, um, and we give the user um, access to that. So um, we do um, a lot of on-site prototyping, um, and I mean, we're not still not living in the ideal world, so I don't want to paint everything in pink. So sometimes we deliver, we create requirements, and then we deliver, um, like, I don't know, four months later, and then start with the with the refinement, but um, I like the approach more to, to deliver early with the plain media wiki and with the customer together work on the features they want. Um, how do we do the feedback? Uh, we have workshops, that's the business model kind of thing. We have the ticket system and um, during this prototyping phase we are in, in very intense touch with um, one or two named stakeholders of the customer. So um, usually these projects are driven by one or two people. Um, that are in, in, in charge of this and um, uh, sometimes we have phone calls like twice, three times a week. Uh, yeah, I'd like to say um, this is probably one of the most important talks that we heard at this conference because it uh, covers the um, marketing aspect of MediaWiki. And I love the uh, white sheet analogy. I think you forgot one thing and that is wiki text. I try to hammer this into people's heads that wiki text is not a hassle, it's a feature. Because it, it, it is the level of the, the layer of technology that really facilitates um, prototyping uh, in, in terms of the uh, factorization of data and everything. So, this is something I'd like to add to, to all of what you said that I couldn't agree more. Right. Um, actually, um just one last remark to that, and, and then I let you off to break. Um, I think when you do prototyping, my like target audience is uh, the power user, like people that are here um, and know about wiki text, know about how to handle tags, know how to handle semantic uh, semantic forms. Um, I don't think you can let a um, average user that is interested in the use case and not in how to build it. Um, to, um, to do a lot of prototyping, um, but maybe, I don't know. Um, and um, yeah, the wiki text question is a, an old one. I think you cannot live with it and you can't live without it. That's basically uh, how, how I uh, kind of feel at the moment. Okay. Um, Uh, there is one more question. Someone stop me if, if this yeah, is. Yeah, that's, that's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just one remark on uh, the white sheet of paper. Um, actually, we had a few examples uh, now of applications that were built uh, that are uh, reusable by clients. So I, I think the white paper is one great advantage, but uh, one of the other things. And, uh, I, I, uh, I see in my own work is that, that you keep repeating yourself in a good way, uh, uh, that you can uh, reuse uh, bits of uh, on general tools uh, for other clients, uh, for, for instance, ticketing systems are something I can imagine with a lot of uh, clients, but us, of course, it's architecture that's uh, standardized in all the important parts. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, that's a very good aspect. Um, uh, and, and as every analogy, analogies do have drawbacks because they do not cover all the aspects. Um, and reusability or evolvability is really one of the things we see in, 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 in wikis, I guess. And um, uh, maybe, yeah, it's good to point that out. Yeah, but there, there's some scissors and uh, some glues. Yeah, and, and, and carbon copy. Yeah. Right. Okay. So thank you everyone.